the more popular function is a looping function called for each, which is pretty interesting. So I'll demonstrate that in the scratch pad. Now, it's a very common feature, you know, it's a very common requirement to loop through an array and examine each and every element in the array. So JavaScript has this inbuilt method for arrays called for each. And this method is pretty interesting because you get to use that a lot when you're working with arrays. And secondly, it uses the feature of passing functions as arguments to another function. You'll see how powerful it is to be able to pass functions. And the way the for each method works is, let me do this here, my array dot for each. Now this for each method takes in a function as an argument. Okay, now I can pass a function here. And let me do a console.log for element, for an element, okay? So I'm basically passing a function into this, all right? So if this is confusing, let me take this out. I have a var my function equals this. So this is a function expression, which has a value of a function, just as console.log, what it does isn't important. But what I can do is I can take this function and pass it in here, okay? So this is the same as what I did before. Before I did the function in line, now I'm assigning it to a variable and then passing that variable over here, okay? So that's what the for each does. The for each accepts a function as an argument. And then what the for each does is after it gets the function, it executes the function for each element of the array. Okay, now how many elements does my array have? It has four elements. Now it's gonna execute my function for each of those elements. It's gonna execute the function four times. So let me run this. And there you see for an element loaded four times. It was executed for this element, this element, this element, and then this element. All right, so this is, you can see how powerful the functional programming aspect of JavaScript is. So this is okay, it's cool and all, but it's not, all that exciting is just executing the same function four times. So wouldn't it be cool if you could say, hey, for each method, you are executing the function that I'm passing to you for each element. Can you also send that element as an argument to my function so that I can do something with it, all right? So the my function is executed for 10, it's executed for 20, it's executed for hello, it's executed for this object. So when you're executing my function for 10, pass 10 to me. When you're executing my function for 20, pass 20 to me. So each time it executes the function for an element, it would be nice if we could pass that element as an argument to the function, right? That would be great. But it turns out the for each method actually does that. It just happens that we are not accessing it. You're not using that uh, argument that's passed to it. You remember we talked about when, uh, when a caller calls a function with more arguments than what is required, uh, those extra arguments are ignored, right? So that's actually what's happening. The for each method is actually calling our function with each of those elements as arguments each time, and we are not using it. So it's just, you know, it's discarded. So in order to use it, I can actually declare an argument in the function, and uh, I don't know, you can use it for printing it like this. So now what's gonna happen is when the for each method executes the function, it is passing this argument anyway uh, when the function is called, but now since you're holding on to it, you can use it in console.log. Now, if I run, well, there you see each element gets printed. Okay, so it's still the same function that's executed for each element, but whenever it executes the function for an element, it passes that element as an argument. So you can hold on to it, and that execution gets that element. Isn't this cool? This is really cool. You can use it for a lot of powerful stuff. You can use it for iterating over uh, an array. So rather than have a for loop, you can have a function which accepts this as an argument and then iterates over it. Uh, what's interesting is there are also a couple of other arguments that get passed each time this executes. We just use the first element, uh, first argument, which was the item. Turns out there are two more uh, arguments that's passed. The second argument is the index, the position at which the, the loop runs, right? So it's executing for each. So the first time the function executes, the first argument will be the first element, the second argument will be zero, 
Okay, the second time the function runs, the second, the first argument will be the second element, and the second argument will be one, and so on. And the third argument in the function execution is the array itself, in case you need it for some reason, but uh, it's not very commonly used. So for each very powerful feature comes out of the box with all arrays in JavaScript. Uh, you can use it. I highly encourage you to use it instead of uh, for loops if this can do the trick.